You're watching Ruroni K95's anime review on Castle in the Sky. Hi, Ruronis. This is your pal, Ruroni K95 here. We got another Miyazaki film from Studio Ghibli to cover for today's anime review is Castle in the Sky. So let's begin with our review. An airship carrying Shita, a young orphan girl who has been abducted by government agent Muska, is attacked by Captain Dola and her pirate air pirate sons are who are in search of Shita's small blue crystal pendant. In the resulting struggle, Shita falls from um, the airship, but her descent is slowed by a mysterious power within the amulet. She safely lands in a small mining town where she is discovered by a brave young orphan boy named Pazu who takes her into his home to recover. Pazu tells her of a mysterious floating island named Laputa, which is visible in a picture taken by his father later they are pursued by Dola's pirates and then by Muska's soldiers. Eventually, the two fall into an abandoned mine where they encounter the local eccentric Uncle Pom, who informs them that Shita's amulet is made of volucite crystal, uh, uh, which is basically pronounced as Aetherium in the American release, a material used to keep Laputa and the other flying cities aloft. Upon in the th leaving the mines, Shita tells Pazu that her full name is Lucita Toel Uel Laputa, that they are then captured by Muska and taken to the fortress of Tedis, where Pazu is imprisoned by in a dungeon tower while Shita is imprisoned in more in a more lavish room. Muska shows Shita a dormant Laputin robot and reveals his knowledge of her secret name, which he interpret inter Interprets up to be that of the Lo uh, Laputin lo royal line. Muska threat and threatens Pazu's life to obtain Shita's cooperation for his own safety. Shita orders Pazu to leave, and Muska offers him money to leave and forget about Laputa. A distraught Pazu returns home where he is ambushed by Dola and her sons. After hearing Pazu out, they can be prepared to intercept, intercept and capture the crystal. Allowing Pazu to join them as preparations proceed, Shita recites the an apotropaic verse and un unexpectedly activates the amulet and the robot which follows Shita destroying the fortress along the way until it's overcome by the military's airship Goliath. Pazu arrives and rescues Shita but obtains the amulet at the pirates accompanied by Pazu and Shita return to their airship Tiger Moth. They pursue the Goliath which is following directions. Indicated by Shita's amulet to locate Laputa, both airships arrive at Laputa and on the following day with the tiger moth having been shot down by Goliath. The two children separate but from Dola's pirates discover the city to be ruined and overgrown. Dola's pirates are captured and Masuka's soldiers plunder the city's treasure upon the gaining entrance to the city's central sphere. A vast rep repository for all of Laputa's scientific knowledge. Masuka Muska captures Shita and his agents open fire upon Pazu, who escapes and frees the pirates in the center of Laputa, which contains the, the immense volucite crystal keeping the city al aloft. Masuka identifies himself as Romuska Palu U Laputa, after another of Laputa's royal line, and uses Shita's crystal to access the advanced Laputan technology. 
He betrays his own soldiers and destroys the Goliath by unleashing Laputa's weapon of mass destruction. During the mayhem, the horrified Sheeta retrieves the crystal amulet and free flees, but Masuk Muska pursues her. Hearing Pazu's voice, Sheeta gives the amulet to him through a gap in the wall and is cornered by Muska in Laputa's throne room. During her confrontation with Muska, Sheeta explains that the people of Laputa left the castle because they realized that man was meant to live on Earth and not in the sky. Muska refuses her arguments, shoots her off her braid, shoots off her braids, and threatens to kill her unless the crystal amulet is given to him. Pazu requests to be allowed to talk with Sheeta. Muska grants them w one minute. Three in the original Japanese version, Shita and Pazu recite a spell of destruction which causes the castle to disintegrate, causing Masuka to fall to his death. After surviving the collapse, Pazu and Shita reunite with Dola and her pirates and leave Laputa behind where they part with the pirates. Pazu flies Shita home as he had promised her to start a new life together. During the end credits, the remains of Laputa float in orbit maintained by the Volusite crystal embedded the root in the roots of the central tree. So that's my review on Castle in the Sky. Miyazaki's earlier anime series, Future Boy Conan, featured a number of the elements that later he adapted for Castle in the Sky. Conan and Lana, for example, were presidents for Presentence for Pazu and Shita and had similarities to Shita's rescue by Pazu. Some of the characters and themes for in Future Boy Conan and set the blueprint for a castle in the sky. Oh, and the name Laputa is der derived from Jonathan Swift's novel Gulliver's Travels, where in Swift's Laputa is also flying island is controlled by its citizens. Anthony Loy feels that Miyazaki's Laputa Castle in the Sky is similar to Swift's Laputa, where the technology superiority of the Castle in the Sky is used for political ends. Speaking of wit, about Castle in the Sky, however, Laputa is created by Koanal Masuka, having informed by biblical and Hindu legends that the world of Laputa to our Earth and the Western to the Western European civilization, and as do as the medieval castle architecture on the ground, the Gothic and half-timbered buildings in the village near the fort, Welsh mining town archi architecture, clothing and ground vehicles of Pazu's homeland, and the Victorian ambience of the pirate ship. The anime also features the use of Sunni form script on Laputa's interactive panels and tombstones and makes reference to the Hindu epic Ramayana, including Indra's arrow, while the name Shita may be related to Sita, the female lead in the Ramayana. Some of the architecture seen in the film was inspired by a Welsh mining town. Miyazaki visited Wales in 1984 and witnessed the miners' strike firsthand. He returned to the country in 1986 to prepare for Laputa, he, which he had said he, he reflected his Welsh experience. I was in Wales just after the miners' strike. I really admired the way the miners' unions fought to the very end for their jobs in the communities. I wanted to reflect the strength for, of those communities in my film. Miyazaki told The Guardian, I admired those men. I admired the way that they battled to... Who save their way of life. Just as the coal miners in Japan did, many people of my generation see the miners as a symbol, a dying breed of fighting men. Now they are gone. Except for the technology of Laputa itself, the technologies, especially the flying machines, are an example of the retro futuristic genre of steampunk. In the late 1980s, the English dub version was produced by Magnum Videotape, dubbing for international Japanese airlines. Flights at the request of Tokuma Shoten was briefly screened in the United States by Streamline Pictures. Carl Masek, the head of Streamline, was disappointed with this dub, deeming it adequate but clumsy. 
Following this, Takuma allowed Streamline to duh their future questions my, for other films like My Neighbor Totoro and Kiki's Delivery Service. The original dub of Castle in the Sky is also seen on the Ghibli, 1996 Ghibli uh, Epi Laserdisc set and on the 19th, first Japanese DVD release. The initial Japanese dub is now out of print, and the subsequent release re-releases in 2014 replaces it with the Disney dub version. The Disney dub produced English dub was recorded in 1998 and planned for release on video in 1999. But it was canceled. But the release was canceled after Princess Mononoke did not fare at well as in the U.S. as Japan. So as Laputa's release date was pushed back yet again, on the occasion the completed dub was screened at the Selective Children's Festival. The film was finally released on DVD and video in the in the U.S. on April 15, 2003, alongside re-releases of Kiki's Delivery Service and Spirited Away. As with Mononoke and Kiki, critical opinion was mixed with about the new dub, but Cloris Leachman and Mark Hamill's performances as Dola and Masuka drew praise. Laputa was reissued on the home vi- an American home video in March 2010 as a tribute accomp- the accompanying the vi- home video release of Ponyo. The film was released on Blu-ray in North America on May 22, 2012, along with Whisper of the Heart and Se- The Secret World of Arietti. G Kids reissued the film on Blu-ray and DVD on October 31, 2007, which is on Halloween. And the box office grossed upon... The film has grossed upon 1.16 billion yen, as it was $8.1 million in the U.S. In Hong Kong... The film was 1987 release grossed upon 13.0 million dollars in Hong Kong as it was to the US but just 1,000 million thousand six hundred seventy nine thousand eight hundred forty three million dollars without hundred dollars in the United Kingdoms first 2012 release grossed upon three hundred hundred seven uh, two seven twenty seven thousand five hundred forty nine dollars in its first week. As it comes to the box office for Castle in the Sky. And the biggest thing was... And of course, in the English dub of Castle in the Sky... It was... Basically was... The d- English dub for, was from Magnum, Takuma, and Streamline was basically in 1989. But for the Disney dub one, is basically in 1998. And the character Sheeta was voiced by... Debbie Derryberry in the Disney dub, as well as Anna... Pa- Queen, but in the Japanese, in the streamlined English dub is Lara Cody. But however, in the original Japanese version is Keiko Yokozawa. She is known for the voice as Lum's toddler cousin Ten's mom in Urusei Yatsura and Natsumi Asayoka from the 1982 anime series The Kabocha Wine as well. And it features Ichiro Nagai from Wicked City. Urusei Yatsura, Inuyasha, any other anime he's also in. Oh, and Peter Fernandez in the English dub, which on Streamline dub of Castle in the Sky, because Peter Fernandez of Speed Racer fame did the ink, did the voice for the narrator in the Streamline dub of Castle in the Sky. So that's going to be it for my anime review on Castle in the Sky. Thank you for watching. Before we go, here's my quick thoughts. Because I have to cover this anime review with a Hayao, with a Studio Ghibli film from Hayao Miyazaki for every anime review because I I really enjoyed the films from Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki because Castle in the Sky is probably one of my favorite Miyazaki films I guess. Hope subscribe for content. My anime plan link in the description down below. You can share this video on your Twitter and Facebook if you have a Twitter and Facebook account. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking the like button on this video. Please comment about your th- about. Do you like about what do you like about Castle in the Sky? By leaving it in the comments section below. Please subscribe to my channel, Ruroni K95. Feel free to join my channel. Click on my notifications bell button. And that's all I have to say. So keep it otaku for this anime review on Castle in the Sky. And that's all I have to say. Because this is my first Miyaz- another Miyazaki anime review I get to do. This concludes my review on Castle in the Sky. Thank you for watching my anime review. I'm glad you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you soon and have a great day. This is Ruroni K95 signing off. And thank you for watching my anime review on the Hayao Miyazaki title Castle in the Sky for today's anime review.